tower, right face. Take two steps forward. Keep going. Stop. No sniper at my feet. Hey guys, Miles here. If you enjoyed that quick highlight reel of training with Tosh, stay tuned for the full episode to get more behind the scenes footage and more details of training when it comes to stalking and field craft. I've been waiting for this episode for quite some time now. This time we're going in deeper into field craft. This episode focuses beyond what we covered in season one. So like I mentioned, field craft, and we've taken a crawl, walk, run approach. And you might be wondering why I'm uh, covered, I mean, I'm all suited up, and it's because we're, we are preparing, this entire episode has prepared me for a stalking exercise. So I'm looking forward to that. So here's the deal, it's you against me, okay? You've already learned all the basic wave top fundamental skills to, to moving in on a, a threat in a rural environment. So now we're gonna test out the skill sets that you've learned from me. We're gonna put you out a thousand yards. You gotta get within 300, no closer than 200 yards to me. Now, the advantage is in my court because I'm gonna know where you're starting from, so I'm gonna be prepared. So the challenge is to you because I got the easy part. I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna look through glass, and I'm just gonna look for you. If I see you, I'm gonna roll you up. But your goal is to try to get through the stock without me seeing you. Awesome. And it's a difficult task because I'm looking for you. The rules are set up for me, not for you, mm -hmm. because we're challenging your skill set. Got it. Okay, so it may seem like I'm cheating. I am cheating because I wanna get you, yeah. and I'm gonna get you. But if you can accomplish all the tasks that I've showed you how to do without somebody seeing you who's looking for you, you've accomplished a lot. So, I'm telling you to beat me. I'm, I'm feeling good about this. I think, uh, I think I'm gonna do well. All right guys, we're going uh, to the starting point, uh, insertion by Tactical Toyota. <laughs> and um, we're gonna get just kind of situated. It's not gonna officially start. Tosh is gonna give the command as to when it starts. So again, we're starting at about 1,000 yards away and I have to get within three, 250 to 300 yards. So within that range, 1,000 yards to 250, 250 yards, that's where Tosh is gonna be looking for me. And uh, the whole idea is to find a FFP, which is called a final firing position. And from there, that's where I'm gonna take my final stand or that final shot, which is why it's called a FFP. Right. Yeah, Long, you're, gonna have, yeah you're gonna have to go up four wheel drum. So we're gonna do a stock, okay? What, what is a stock? So basically what a stock is, is an exercise of you use implementing uh, field craft skills under observation, okay? So there's gonna be somebody down range looking for you and you're gonna implement the techniques that you're taught, okay? There's gonna be a time limit. Uh, depending on the size of the stock field, how far you have to travel, a stock could be as short as two hours, as long as however anybody wants to make it, okay? Uh, the longest stock that, we, that I think I've ever done, time period wise, was about four hours. All right guys, I'm at the insertion point. I got five minutes until we start, so I'm gonna take that five minutes to veg up as much as I can. Then I gotta make my way down um, about uh, 700 yards to the final firing position, so wish me luck. So depending on the schoolhouse that you go to or, or, 
whoever's teaching you, they may have you, they're gonna have you start in an area where you cannot be observed, okay? And they're gonna give you kind of like a, a prep period to get your, get your gear ready for the stock. And then they'll give you a countdown and they'll say, hey, time starts and you start moving out or you, you're, you're planning what you're gonna do. A lot of mistakes that I see that guys that go through sniper school, they get the, hey, time starts now and everybody just takes off. All right guys, so we've officially started the time and uh, I'm gonna start. I gotta get around um, closer to 300 yards. So yeah, let's uh, see how I do. I'm gonna veg up a little bit right now. Um, I'll veg up a little bit more. And what we're doing here is we're trying to change the shape of the gun and cr create kind of a, a false bush if you will so this is this is an art in itself how to veg up your gun once you build this all up now and you got your gun on top of this all camouflaged up which we'll do later right you you essentially have a wall of veg in front of you and you fill that in on a bush and it fills in the bush it's really hard to burn through as an observer to burn through because you've got so many layers yeah. Here's another little trick of the trade. Let me see your clippers. If I clip this, okay, watch what happens. And this is facing towards you. What do you see? Uh, the white of the branch. Right. Okay. And then that gonna... can get you rolled up. Uh -huh. So if you are gonna cut, you know, especially thicker stuff, yeah. if you are gonna cut, make sure that you dirty it up. Mm -hmm. Okay, stupid little things like that. Making a veg fan to help uh, disguise myself. So in our route, however we got here, in our route to get here, we're gonna be collecting up and making something, a bunch of these up. Uh, these things right here. These are veg fans, okay? They're very useful, okay? Hopefully that the vegetation you're, you have is durable so you can, it can last. And you can use these these veg fans in so many different ways. You can add them to augment your tripod, augment your gun, augment your bush. You could, if you've got enough of these made up and they all don't have to be this thick, okay? You can make smaller ones, bigger ones, whatever you wanna do. And you can add it to the bush to make it thicker if you want to. Mm -hmm. All right guys, spend some time putting a little bit more vegetation on my, uh, my uh, ghillie, ghillie hat. Now I'm gonna make uh, some moves and uh, I'm gonna have to do this slow and see how I do. All right. A lot of vegetation here. Let's see. So I've moved about 10 yards and this sucks. So we're gonna talk about how to move. We're gonna do it a couple different ways. Now you're gonna do a crawl, mm -hmm. okay? How do we do that with the weapon system? I have no idea. Okay, get on all fours. <laughs> all fours. If you have, so what you don't wanna do is use your weapon system as a crutch. Okay. Okay? So you gotta carry that in such a way that it doesn't. So you may have to do a three, uh, you know, a tripod type method. Mm -hmm. So tuck that under, that's the beauty of the, the bull pup is that you've got a long barrel and it's a smaller weapon, all the weights towards the back. So you can yeah. cinch it back in. And 
Yeah. I'm literally going to be, this is not going to be on my belly just yet. This not is just yet, just this here. is just a crawl, okay? okay? So. It's a high crawl, crawl. So this is what I would think, just kind of like that. And it, it, you can see, keep going. A little bit. I want you to get the full feel of this. Keep going. Keeping your eyes ahead, watching where you put your next foot. Your, your next your next hand position, everything. Reading your terrain, making sure you're not bleeding out from the sides of your cover. Now think about doing that for a thousand yards. Yeah. During the time of your stock, as you're moving in, the walker's gonna be out there, but he's not gonna be near you. So, but he is gonna move up with you. So if I do see you, then, I, then he doesn't have to walk six miles to get where you're at. I, I need him not so close that he gives you up, but he's going to be near you. Hey, five steps forward. Alright, uh, left face. Take two steps forward. Take another half, half step forward. Stop right there. Stop. Face tower. I'm gonna go ahead and say sniper at your feet. Damn it. Now, during the stock, if I do roll you up, okay, I'm gonna tell you what I saw, mm -hmm. okay? And then we're gonna reset you. He's gonna reset you behind dead space, and you're gonna restart from that point on moving in, but it's still part of your two hour time limit. Got it. So you don't want to get rolled up because now he's going to move you probably another 25, 30 yards back and you got to make up Redo that it. ground again. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the pain of getting caught. All right guys, um, so I found a new uh, insertion point and game on. So let's say this bush right here is your, your FFP. This is the, it's thick enough, you've got multiple layers in front of that, it's, it's the ideal spot. So those are things that you need to consider. How many layers of veg do I have between me and the OP or my intended target? So you're gonna stock up, get, get in, set up your fire, final firing position, you're gonna take your blank shot. After you take that first blank shot, if I haven't seen you, okay, he's the walker's gonna call call me up on the radio and say, hey, got a shooter, okay, and then I'll glass the area. And if I don't see anything, I'm gonna tell him to get within 12 yards of you. Okay, all right, get within 10. I'm within 10. He's gonna get within 12 yards. I'm gonna scan the area of where that 12 yards is. If I don't see anything at that point. I'm gonna tell you and him to load a second round. Okay, go ahead and load second round. Load second round. Okay, shooter, stand by. Three, two, one. Okay, still don't see anything. Go ahead and put your hat on his head. If I still don't see anything, then I'm gonna have him put it put his hat on top of your head so I can see what you look like. Okay. And then I'll I'll debrief you on how you did. Good job. Thank you. That's an excellent hide, man. Yep. So there you guys have it. That is our field craft 
episode with Tosh. And I have to say, it's been uh, a few awesome sessions with Tosh, uh, learning the whole trade. Of course, this is just, you know, the wave tops. Uh, there's a lot more to learn, but I really appreciate Tosh taking the time to share what he has with me. Can't and give you any secrets. That's, <laughs> and it was just great. It was a great experience. Um, now I know why people say that it kind of sucks. <laughs> but it's, to me, it was, it was, it's a challenge. It sucks because it's like hot, the weather, you get all dirty, but I, I really liked it. And once, once I was in the, fi the final firing position, to me that, okay, that was good, I could relax and, and you know, start to think and how am I going to really do things. So I, I, I thought it was awesome. Mm -hmm. in, in all reality, that, the skill sets that you've learned is nothing more than any good uh, uh, big game hunter uses, mm -hmm. whether it be by a bow or by a long rifle, whatever it is. It's just, it, and that's only the wave tops. You, you can see that there is a lot to be learned out Absolutely. there. Yep. I mean, what was the biggest takeaway you got from it? Oh, uh, there was just so many. Like if I were just based on today though, it's uh, to me, it was just really, you know, you have to solidify that really good final firing position and just really be confident that you can move and set everything up to take that final shot. That was, for me, the biggest takeaway. So right, right, right. I, I was worried. There, there was uh, those, those instances where I was like, oh boy, like once I was by the FFP, once I, once I had a good position, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of <laughs> knew where you were at. But so my criteria, whenever I work the tower, um, is the question is, would I shoot that if that was a real threat out there? If I thought that was a real threat? Mm -hmm. And unless I can verify and positively ID a target, I'm not gonna walk a walker on it. Uh -huh. So that, that's kind of my criteria for that. Unless it's just such a gross movement that that needs to be addressed, like the one spot where we rolled you up, you, yeah. you were a little bit out in the open and you're moving a little too fast. Mm -hmm. So that that one particular spot, that, I mean, that was gross. So I wouldn't have really had time probably to take a shot mm -hmm. on something like that because you, you melted away. Yeah. As soon as you hold, heard freeze, you melted down really quick. Yeah. Would I have been able to take a shot on that? I, I don't know. There's a plateau there where there are certain spots where if you do get up, you know, Tosh, I was worried Tosh could absolutely see me. And the hard part is sometimes you don't really know, like you want to move slow, but if you're tired or you just want, you're trying to move fast, you make mistakes and well, that's exactly. that's the thing with this game, right? If I happen to be looking over where you're at and you make a mistake, you're gonna get caught. Yeah. But if I happen to not be looking over there and you, you can get away with a lot. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is important when you do a stock like this is to know what the OP is doing. And if you've got a quick way to look, most people can't stay on glass for mm -hmm. two hours straight. Yeah. Just burn and burn and burn and burn. And, because your eyes get tired, there there are challenges on this because everything's two dimensional mm -hmm. out there for the for the tower. So we can't, until we get some kind of uh, reference where we can burn past what we're looking. So that's why getting as many layers of veg in front of you is so important and, and having good backdrop because it, to us, it's just a screen when mm -hmm. we're looking through, through the binos. Got it. So there are, there are definite challenges uh -huh. to that on that side of it. And, and that would be an interesting uh, flip thing, side. Yeah. flip side, having uh -huh. somebody out there you know, I could do it. And then you being on the tower trying, trying to roll to somebody them. out. Yeah, that's you know? pretty cool. Yeah. And maybe make it more challenging where I have a walker that's right on top of me. Uh huh. You know, mm -hmm. because I have no idea if the walker's near you or he's farther away. Yeah. And he's not going to say he, anything. He's yeah. not going to give it up to mm -hmm. me, you know, unless he doesn't like you. <laughs> You know, I, I thought it was awesome. Um, the progression from season one, and then you know, we've been we met a couple times already, a number of times uh, working on this. So, from marksmanship to the field craft, it's been awesome. And I know a number of you have messaged us and interested about you know, like, are we going to hold class and things like that? So, Tosh, do you ever think about holding field craft yeah, classes? Yeah, so my company, strategicopstraining.com, um, I do offer at uh, a sniper experience. Uh, we're not gonna teach you any trade secrets, but we'll teach you enough that you'll learn how to do a stock. You'll be able to take a live fire uh, shot on the stock and you get to test yourself. But we will go through a process where we'll teach you just the stuff you need to know. None of the, the you know, mm. the, the, the trade understand. secrets. Yeah. 
Awesome. Uh, and, and really, what, what do you get from doing that? Well, you get the experience of doing it, but actually you can take these skill sets, if you're a hunter, and utilize them, mm -hmm. you know, for hunting big game. And, and uh, I mean, just, just little things that you pick up. That's the beauty of doing a stock, is that you, you find those little fine points that will screw you up if you're doing something for Absolutely. real. Absolutely, I, yeah. I, I learned uh, that real quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but again, Tosh, I really appreciate the experience. It was awesome. And for those of you who've been asking for, you know, stock classes or something beyond your typical long range class, there you go, guys. Tosh is uh, all going to be offering those classes or is offering those classes, so look it up. I do offer long range shooting too. There you go. Yeah, so <laughs> the whole package there, guys. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and um, thanks, Tosh, again for yeah, the easy. wonderful, awesome experience. Good work. Yeah, thank you. And we'll see you guys in the next episode of The Journey.